Hey guys, welcome back. Skitzone series episode 25. Topic today is STL files, what they are, how they work, importing them, exporting them. It's a very pervasive CAD file format, at least for like 3D printing and very simple geometries. Um, it's very simple, uh, but it's also very kind of inefficient. So there are mixed opinions on this file format, but we're gonna use it just for basic IO in this series. So what are STL files? Basically they describe a triangulated surface, a, a body, a set of bodies, there's a, a geometry in space that's comprised of triangles essentially. And then there's two kinds of STL files. There's ASCII ones so that the actual definition of every single triangle is li li written out literally, you know, with ASCII characters. Of course, you know, 55.312 is, you know, an ASCII implementation of a number. So you have to be able to parse that. So it's a little bit larger. It's harder to parse for our program, um, but it is easy to read. You can open it in a text editor. You can you know, see what the values are inside and uh, change them on your own. Binary files, obviously, that's just the encoding of all the triangles with zeros and ones. Um, so it's not easy to read in a text editor, but of course we don't care. We're going to edit them with our software. Um, and obviously they're gonna be smaller and easier to parse on our end. So that's one major advantage. So for that binary STL format, how does it look? Well, basically there's an 80 byte header, which I believe everything out there ignores completely. Uh, then you have a four byte encoding of the number of triangles in total. So if you have 10 triangles, you'd write the number 10 in a four byte number there. Then you just loop through every single triangle and write 50 bytes worth of data. And that's broken up into 48 bytes of valuable information and two bytes of nonsense, um, which are just gonna be zeros. So of that 48 bytes, there's four basically uh, sets of three single precision floating point numbers, those being the X, Y, Z coordinates of certain things. So the first X, Y, Z vector that you're going to encode is the normal vector of the triangle. So you have to compute that somehow and you write that there. Again, in this series, we do all pretty much double precision math. So we're gonna to have to convert our eight byte floats into four byte floats for this to make sense. So yeah, we're gonna write a, uh, basically the X, Y, Z components of the normal vector with four byte floats. Then you'd write the actual vertex information, the X, Y, Z coordinates of vertex one, vertex two, vertex three, again, with the four byte floats. And then lastly, the two bytes of zeros. So it's very straightforward of a format and you can kind of imagine the inefficiencies of this because unless you have a, a scatter field of triangles as what you want to draw or what you want to print out, um, you're going to have duplicated information because typically a triangulated surface, whatever you have, is going to have a boundary between triangles and those two vertices are the same vertices, but this format is encoding them separately. So you're gonna have duplicated vertex information if you use the STL file format, it's just how it's gonna be. Okay, so exporting this format out is very straightforward. If you recall, we have this sample geometry um, that's kind of reminiscent of what we're doing in the series. We have this data structure here that we've been using for rendering stuff for the past couple of videos, call it a face structure, and it encodes the number of points in our geometry that we wanna draw, number of faces in our geometry that you wanna draw, as well as pointers to the arrays for the actual point data and the face data. The point data is just literally a list of the X, Y, Z coordinates of every single vertex. So vertex zero is the first three double precision floats here. So X, Y, Z of vertex zero, X, Y, Z of vertex one, vertex two, vertex three, etc. right? The face array basically encodes the indexing into the vertex array. So face zero, consists of a triangle with vertices at these points, vertex zero, vertex two, and vertex one. And then it co it's colored red. This is the R value, this is the G value, this is the B value, this is the opacity, and this is just the orientation of our bitmap. Um, so it's gonna be a red triangle with those three vertices. And then the second face is going to be vertex zero, vertex three and vertex two. As you can see, we have duplicated the information for vertex zero 
and for Vertex 2. And so STL format is less efficient than our internal format for carrying this geometry around, rendering it, changing it, whatever we're doing with this geometry in our own program. Okay, so how do we export this, this kind of structure out as an STL? Straightforward, opening up a file, write that nonsense 80 byte header, write the face count, that's this value here, out in a four byte number, then you loop through the faces. First thing, we have no representation of the normal, of the vertex, well, of the triangle normal in our face structure. So you're gonna have to compute that, right? We're not encoding the normal for each face. We could, that would be a waste of space though. So we'll have to basically, for, for face one, you have to grab those three triangles, vertex, with vertex zero, vertex two, vertex one, compute the normal, and the normal is the right hand rule. So take the vector between vertex zero and two, and the vertex zero and one, cross product that, that points in your normal direction, and you can get uh, the normal out of that. Only caveat there is everything that we've done is with these quad words, so eight byte floats, whereas this format uses, you can see here, real 32, that's a four byte float. So you have to basically convert our eight byte floats into four byte floats, which is not hard. There's actually an instruction that you can use to do that. So it's not bad at all. Um, and then you have to write out that value. So write the normal out, then you loop through, write all the vertex data out, and then you put that last two bytes of zeros, and you loop through that for every single face. Um, obviously, you'd want to buffer that. You won't, won't, don't want to write two bytes at a time. That would be very slow. You'd like to basically put all these things in a single buffer and then write them out at the end of the day. That's what we do in this, in this series. So importing is basically just the opposite, unless you want to be fancy, which we do. Um, so basically, you'll open up your input file, that STL. You'll throw out that garbage header, 80 bytes. Then you'll read that face count, that four byte face count value. You'll read that in. Let's say it's 10. You have to then allocate enough bytes for your face array and your point array structures, right? So you, you're not going to have this yet. You just open an STL file. You want to create this kind of a geometry. So you have to allocate this many bytes for the points this many points for the faces. Of course, we were clever and we reused points. Vertex two and one, or vertex two and zero, I should say, were duplicated across these two faces. There's no idea of that in STL. So you're gonna have to allocate even more memory than you think you'd need. If you'd like to just encode everything directly as it's written in the STL file. So yeah, um, allocate that many bytes for your two structures, then loop through the faces, read that 50 byte data in, grab the 12 byte normal, just throw it away. Who cares about that value? We don't use that value. Then look through the vertices and grab each of those 12 byte um, groupings of the, the three four byte numbers, convert them into, into double position numbers and write them to our point structure as we talked about before. And then you just throw in the last two bytes of zeros. And lastly, that will handle all your point information, but you will also still have to handle the, this stuff down here. I mean, this is easy. You just grab that, you know, from your 50 bytes right here. You just grab those values. But how do you get the, the values here? Well, because you're reading this file and you have new vertex every single time you go through, right? This is a new vertex. This is a new vertex. This is a new vertex. Every single time is a new vertex. You can just increment by one every time, right? So your face structure will basically just say 0, 1, 2 three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you know, etc. So it's very easy to create this. And then if you want to add a color, you can add a color. I think I leave it to be white, but you can change whatever color, or I, or I think black. You can change whatever color you want though, obviously. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now, of course, before we get into the code, um, we're gonna actually do a little bit more advanced stuff than this. We're gonna go through and we're gonna get rid of, we're gonna cull out all of the duplicated vertices, which takes a little bit of thinking about how that works. I'm not gonna go through it in this slide. It's a little bit more complex, but you can imagine just going through this array, checking if a vertex has already been used. Hey, I have this point somewhere at 0 0.5.50 in space. Oh, hey, another point at 0 0.5.50. It's the same point. So I won't use this new point, I'll just use the old point instead. Every instance of this new point, I'll replace with the old point. 
right? So that's pretty simple. Um, okay, yeah, the code now, pretty quick. We have two examples, one is export, one is import. Let's make sure you can see, you can. So exporting uh, makes sense first. So we go into example A. Uh, I'll remove the binary, I'll remove the cross STL so you can see this thing works. So we have code, I'll go into what it does in a second. I'll run it first. So we've assembled and executed that set of instructions. We now have a cross STL. I can't show it to you here. I mean, I could, I could render it in the next example, but I'll show it to you on GitHub because they have a rendering tool for geometries like this. You can see here, this is that same um, location on the suppository. <laughs> um, and here's that cross STL file. We've had a similar, actually the exact same file in a previous couple of videos. So it should not be you know a new thing for you, but you can see here, this is the exact structure that we've been using previously. So yeah, it clearly works. We can export our internal representation of this geometry into an STL file for use in other programs. You could 3D print this, for example, right? Okay, that's cool. Um, how does that work? So let's open up. I do have, I think, yeah. So this is what's running. This is the actual instructions for that particular executable. Um, headers from before. The only new include that we have is this export STL function, which I, I also have open in the other tab there. Uh, we'll go through that in a second. But basically all we're doing is we're opening our file output with read, write, um, and create permissions. So this way it knows to make the file if it does, doesn't exist already. Uh, we then run our export STL file with an input of a face structure that we've used in previous videos, and then we just exit the program. So what is this face structure? You can see here, it's just the definition of the points and faces that comprise that cross. And so all these points on the cross, all these faces on the cross, and all those different colors on the cross as well. Of course, STL files don't contain color information, at least not usually. Um, so that's all lost when we export. And then here's the file name down here, cross STL, and then it's a null terminated string. So yeah, that's basically what's running. Now what's going on behind the scenes in this export STL function. So let's see. This function exports the face structure. Oh, yeah, exports the face structure that you pass in to that file that you've already opened. And uh, one thing it does do is it uses that same print buffer. I mentioned before that you don't want to be writing two bytes at a time to your output file. So we use our same print buffer from our previous, you know, way back video. But of course, to do that, you have to make sure that your print buffer is empty at the beginning. So either you have to flush everything out or just set it back to zero. And so we just set the print buffer length to zero at the start of this program to basically indicate that everything else that we had already put in our print buffer, maybe some debug information or whatever we want to print out is now null and void. And we're using that print buffer to export our new STL file. Okay, so you pass in that pointer to that face structure uh, into the program. And uh, what does it do? So first off, it prints 80 bytes of that header. So what is the header? Well, I could just put nonsense in there. You can put whatever you'd like. Here's my nonsense. Then you pass in the four byte value for the number of triangles. So you grab the triangle count from your ar array, your face count, and then you just convert that to a four byte number and write it out to your file. So we've done that here. Lastly, you loop through all the vertices and you can see here, um, <clears throat> we're just grabbing the address of those different coordinates for the three vertices and then writing them out to the, to a basically, well, first of all, we compute the normal from those vertices. We have a function called uh, triangle normal that's gonna actually evaluate those vertices and then compute the normal, which is great. But then next, you write that normal information out to the file as well as the three vertex pieces of information here. So X, Y, and Z values for all that. And this instruction here, this CVT SD to SS, that converts a scalar double into a scalar single as far as floating point is concerned. That's your eight byte to four byte conversion. Okay, and then it prints that out. So you can see we have an intermediate buffer that we're using 
before our print buffer. So we're basically dropping that normal information, those 12 bytes, plus 12 bytes of each uh, vertex information into our triangle buffer. And then lastly, we actually write that triangle buffer out. And that triangle buffer is down at the bottom, I imagine, right here. The triangle buffer, 50 bytes, all zeros initialized. Okay, pretty simple. That works as intended. We have the ability to export STL files from our internal geometric representation. Example B. This one was the exact opposite, and I will show you the code before I show you the actual running of the, of the program. So how does this work? This is the opposite. This takes an STL file and renders it. So it's a little bit more ad advanced, I would say. Let me also open up the import STL function. So yeah, what's going on in this, in this program? Basically, we have to render to the screen our geometry to see what we've just imported. So we have to include those functions as well as um, the import STL program and then also function and then also I have this uh, random integer include just, just, just to give us some random face colors for our geometry because like I said before there's no color data past it with STLs so we have to pick our own colors and so I just picked random colors for every single face. So how does this work? We have our cursor definition here as usual then we have a um, very simple program so open that input file import the STL that generates a face structure, you can see here. Um, and then we color the face randomly with this random integer function. And then we have to actually render our geometry. We covered this before in multiple videos. So that requires a perspective geometry as well as the linked list of geometries that you wanna actually draw. In this case, just one body, non-convex body. So yeah, and of course you could allocate this mem this structure on the heap as well. I've defined it here in memory just to keep things simple, but uh, you can just as easily have this be done on, on the heap or on the stack, potentially. So how does that import STL function work? I won't get into too many details because this involves the more advanced stuff of culling out duplicated vertices. But you can see here, in this case, we have to actually have the ability to, do we even need this? Kind of normal thing. I don't think we do. I don't think we need that. I'll get rid of that right now. So uh, yeah, we have to have the ability to allocate and free stuff on the heap in order to create our data structures for the point and the face information. So basically, you just undoing what you just did before. So we skip that useless 80 byte header. You can see here, we use the lseek system call. That's a system call that allows you to just basically put your cursor somewhere else in a file. So we basically move the cursor in our file 80 bytes to just skip over the header. Then we grab that four byte triangle count and we use that triangle count to allocate our arrays for the point data and face data. So that's what we do here. Then we Oh, we at this point we have enough information to populate that face structure, right? Because we have, I mean, ideally at this point, we allocated this array already. So we have that address. We know what this address is going to be. Also this address. So we can drop those two things into our face structure, but we also have the number of points and faces. Once you read the number of faces from the file, an STL file, you know that there's three vertices per face. And so this number is just three times this number. So that's very straightforward. Um, and then you loop through everything and you basically undo what we just did. And so in this case, you can see here, we are looping through, we're grabbing 50 bytes at a time from the input file into our in intermediate buffer here called triangle buffer. Then we are reading uh, basically each part of that intermediate buffer. So the first 12 bytes is ignored, it's the normal. And then we're grabbing the three, the 12 bytes for the first vertex, second vertex, and third vertex. And then you can see we're just converting that value from a, a scalar single to a scalar double, and then putting that basically in memory at the location in our point array. 
So very simple there. Now down here, we're actually going through, so you could end the program there. That's, that's sufficient to make things work. You could just return at this point um, and you'll have two, you basically have everything you need. You'll have all this here. You'll have your point structure and your face structure. Everything will work as intended. However, you'll have a bunch of those duplicated points. And so at this point, there's some logic, actually quite a bit of logic to go through and call out all the duplicated vertices and uh, make sure you have a correct structure. So I will now show you this program running. Um, so let's, let's remove the binder so you can show that it works. Yes, run it as sudo because it has to render things to the frame buffer. Here you can see the cross that we had before now rendered. Now you'll see that we've taken the STL file and yeah, it, it, it works for the most part. You do see some visual glitches. Those are nothing to do with our STL importing. That's because this is a non-convex shape and you kind of can see we have no idea of which face to draw first. For that, you have to either, one of two things, deconstruct this geometry into constituent convex hulls or whatever you call them, or have a depth buffer, neither of which I'm doing right now. Maybe in the future we'll implement a depth buffer so you can get rid of this kind of a visual artifact. But for now, I think it gets a point across. We can basically import an STL file from the internet and get that file in our own internal CAD representation easy. So we can use that for any kind of engineering purpose. You want to compute the, the CG of an object. You want to compute the volume of an object. You want to can do all this kind of different math. You can do it um, very easily now. So it's a big milestone for us being able to interact with outside programs so we can write STL files to then slice up and print on a printer. We can make a file in, in SOLIDWORKS or in FreeCAD or whatever, and then import it into our program. So a lot of doors are now open for us. So I wanted to cover this topic at this point in the series. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if not, that's okay too. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.